Radio. You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Well, hello, hello. Good afternoon to everybody. You are live with me. I'm Dr. Jeff Werber here on Pet Life Radio on Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff. And I am back. I don't know if you may have noticed that last week's show, if you are avid listeners to our programming, you may have noticed that we had a repeat. And the reason is I was out of the country. I had a uh, phenomenal time. I was actually asked to lecture in two conferences on the other side of the world. One was in London at the London Vet Forum. And then just kind of randomly, I was asked to speak at the Southern European Veterinary Conference in Barcelona, Spain, the following week. I mean, it was just too amazing how it happened and how everything fell into place. So took off for London, spent a few fun days in London, then on to Italy. And then from Italy, it was Barcelona, where I spoke at the Southern European Veterinary Conference. And it was just amazing. And then the weather was terrific. We I had a little rain, as, as everyone, anyone who's been to London knows. It's kind of gloomy, but uh, it was great. We had one day of kind of a light rain, and that was about it. So uh, anyway, it was so interesting being in Europe. And obviously, whenever I travel anywhere, I love to visit, and I kind of like enjoy seeing how people are with them. And I noticed some very interesting things that when, you know, like if, if you're walking on the street here in the States and you see somebody walking a dog and you want to stop because you're a, a dog lover and you want to kind of, you know, talk to the owner or just say hi to the dog, people will stop and they love when someone comes over and pays attention to their pet. And it was so amazing that there, it's almost like when I first, first time it happened, I thought, oh, that guy's in a rush or he's not the kind of guy or he doesn't like people touching his dog. I couldn't figure it out. But I f- thought it was him. Then as I'm walking along and seeing more dogs and, and stopping to say hello and, and talk to them, even dogs that I have like a Labrador or a Frenchie, people, and it wasn't a language barrier, they just didn't seem to have that same excitement, that same enjoyment to have somebody appreciate their pet. And I just thought that was so bizarre. And I have to say, it was that way at least more through um, Italy and Barcelona. And I also noticed something very interesting. And it's just weird. Typically, if you see people walking in their pets here in town, I'm not talking about a dog park. I'm just talking walking on the street. I typically would probably see more women than men. There, it was the other way around. There were many more men walking their pets. And I'm talking, you know, some of these macho guys with these little dachshunds or little poodles or little Yorkies or Shih Tzus. It was very funny. But only a few people actually seemed to appreciate someone stopping and uh, talking about their pets. They just didn't have that same warmth. Uh, and I'd be curious to know, anyone who's traveled to this part of the world, I want to hear from you. I'd just like to know if you had the same experiences or if you know anybody who lives there and is it just the way the culture is. But it was pretty fascinating. It was my first time over there. So I, I really have nothing to compare it to other than maybe some of you calling in. Speaking of which, I'm easy to get a hold of. And I'm here every Thursday, 1 o'clock in the West, 4 o'clock in the East, and anything in between. I want you to call us. We're here live. And I'm here to help you with your pets, answer questions, give you advice, and it's free, and you can't beat free. And the number here to get me is 877-385-8882 here at Pet Life Radio. And also an extra added bonus, since we are one of our key sponsors, is ProSense Pet Products. Uh, This is a line that I helped develop, and it basically is to give to the consumer the benefits of really good quality pet product, but available to you at the mass market level, which makes it much less expensive. And I know it's very expensive to keep your pets very healthy. And, you know, veterinary medicine is expensive. This is obviously not at all to replace the relationship you have with your veterinarian. But if there's some things that you can buy that might be a little expensive, and maybe you'll be more apt to use them because you don't have to spend so much money, then that's a great way to go. Then I feel like I've accomplished something. So um, ProSense uh, Pet Products. So as a caller, when you send us an email, which I'm, I got a couple I'm going to read, we will send you out a gift of a ProSense pet product. Speaking of emails, we had two recently. I'm going to uh, pick them up from my trusted iPhone. This coming in from Haley. Now, Haley, I'm going to have to get back to her next week because it is about, not only is it about a snake, and I, though I love snakes and I adore them and I'm totally not afraid of them, I know very little about as far as their medical care, and this is a weird one, and it goes, hi, my snake needs help. 
I rescued him and took him to the only reptile vet in my area, and that's pretty normal. Not a whole lot of veterinarians do reptiles. He has a metabolic bone disease, and because of this, his spine basically looks like an accordion, and his hemispines are prolapsed. He's too skinny to do surgery, and for some reason, he's not gaining weight. He cannot defecate on his own. He needs daily warm soaks. This can't be comfortable. My veterinarian recommended euthanasia, but I really want a second opinion. Thank you. Well, Haley, I am not your second opinion. However, I am very friendly with Dr. Chris Wong up in Sacramento. I am going to give him a holler, and let's see if we can't get an answer for you. And if not, he will know somebody who can. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to read this again next week, and by then, we'll have an answer for you. Then from Facebook, the Facebook page for Pet Life Radio, John Belega, I hope that I'm pronouncing it, John, I'm not butchering your name, writes, Dr. Jeff, love the program. I'm in Holland, New York, have an eight-year-old Shih Tzu, and have been feeding her Iams for one to six-year dry dog food. What would you suggest for her at this age? She's now eight. She is still very active, but looks like she's losing weight. Thank you, John. Now, what's interesting that many dogs, as they get older, a number of things are happening. First of all, they seem to have suffered from some part of a muscle atrophy, which could be why they occasionally lose weight. However, typically, as with people, what happens as we get older, our metabolism slows down, we start getting those aches and pains, so we're not out there running like we uh, used to. We end up gaining weight in our older age. We end up putting on the pounds, getting that midsection, and guys, I know you out there, you know, complaining about the same thing. So if you ate at, say, 50, the same way you ate at 25, trust me, you're going to gain weight. So we tend to have to slow down on the eating and force ourselves to exercise more and keep our muscles toned and adjust our caloric intake to meet the changes in our metabolism. So by the fact that there's some weight loss, may not be an issue at all, but I often worry when we're having weight loss that maybe something else may be going on. Certainly, if this were a cat, I'd be concerned about kidney dysfunction, hyperthyroidism. Dogs typically don't get hyperthyroidism. They actually get hypothyroidism. And in that case, they would be gaining weight. So, John, the first thing I want you to do at eight years of age, if you haven't done it already, you need to take your Shih Tzu in for a senior physical. Get some blood tests done, get some a urinalysis, and let's find out, really make sure everything else is okay. Because though I think it's a good idea to switch to a senior diet, I also want to make sure that there's nothing that we're missing because of an eight-year-old dog losing weight, unless suddenly she's become more active or you have been cutting back on her food, uh, having been told that you should, which is it's not the wrong advice, it's actually the right advice. However, maybe in her case, if she's still very active, she's losing weight, you need to increase, again, her caloric intake or go back to where you were before you changed. But if there has been no change at all and uh, she is just losing weight, I want her checked out. Uh, there are some organs that as they malfunction, we tend to lose weight. Number one is heart disease, kidney disease, and of course, the dreaded cancer. When it seems like much of the nutrition that we are taking in is, in, in a sense, being robbed and uh, by the growth of the mass, and it's taking it away from our own metabolism, so there is weight loss. So that, you know, again, I, I worry about that anytime with an old dog, but I just think it's good medicine. You have an old dog, you have a senior, now's the time from the once year exams, you start going twice a year and make sure you have blood tests and urinalysis, maybe some x-rays done somewhat regular basis, not necessarily have to be every year if things are looking great and your pet is doing well. But I always tell people that don't wait until there's a problem. Most of the things we can deal with if we get a head start because of good preventive care and some proactive work on your parts, then it serves us and your dogs and cats much better down the road. So um, anyway, but I want to thank both of you for writing in. John, I have your email. I'm going to email you to give me your address. We're going to send you out probably a senior vitamin for your dog. I think for a, a sheet too, that would be extremely appropriate. And Haley, boy, I don't know what I'm going to send you out for a snake. I hope you have a dog or a cat as well in that humble household of yours, and we'll take care of that. So um, anyway, I want to hear from you. I'm sitting here. We're just about to go to break. You can reach us at 877-385-8882. You can also go online to Pet Life Radio and just kind of uh, key in a response. There's a, a little um, join the conversation. You can log in live, ask me a question. I'll read it and answer it. You can also send me an email personally to Dr. Jeff 
at PetLifeRadio.com. And our good producer, Mark Winter, will go ahead and send that to me. And I will read it live on air. We'll answer your question. We're going to help you out with your pet. And you're going to get a free ProSense pet product to boot. So uh, can't go wrong. So anyway, we're at that time. We're time to uh, take our mid-show quick break. So don't go away. We'll be back in just a few minutes here. Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff here on PetLifeRadio.com. We'll be right back. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. Every pet is unique. Maybe they're gray in the muzzle, yet young at heart. Maybe they're growing out of the puppy stage and into their paws and ears. Or maybe they're just trying to maintain a more girlish figure. At PetSmart, we have the right food for your pet at a great value for you. PetSmart. Be better together. Go to PetSmartDeal.com and save up to 30% on awesome gifts for the pets and pet people in your life. Toys, collars, leashes, PetSmart gift cards, treats, and more. Go to PetSmartDeal.com today. P-E-T-S-M-A-R-T-D-E-A-L.com. I'm not much of a reader, but I do wish I were more well-read. There are so many great books coming out. I wish I could find a way to keep up. Audible.com makes it easy to stay well-informed and catch up on your reading simply by listening. Audiobooks from Audible turn downtime into uptime. You'll be more productive and become well-read. Now I'm able to catch up on all the great books I've been wanting to read. With Audible, I feel smarter. Pet Life Radio listeners, try Audible.com now and get your first 30 days of Audible Listener Gold Membership plan free. And get a free audiobook. Choose from over 100,000 titles. To get this great deal, go to audibledeals.com. That's audibledeals.com. Hi, everybody. I'm Megan Blake here with my sidekick, Super Smiley. The giant mutt and spokes dog for throwaways. You're listening to Pet Life Radio, and I'd like to tell you about our brand new show, A Super Smiley Adventure. Our show explores adventures with animals. They can be traveling, out in the world trips, or inner journeys where our animals lead us to inspiration and self-discovery, or just plain, fun adventures. Join us here on Pet Life Radio on A Super Smiley Adventure. Good boy. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Well, welcome back to Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff. Um, I um, have been gone for uh, uh, a week. I missed uh, last week's show. It was a repeat. I'd love anybody who knew it was a repeat. You know what that tells me? That tells me that you are here with us every week listening, and you're saying to yourself, wait a second. I remember that question, or I remember him talking about this. So uh, if you were thinking that, you were right, because it was a repeat. It wasn't easy. We tried to work it out, actually, but the time difference, nine hours, it wouldn't have put me in a very good mood to have to be up at that hour to meet the, this one o'clock deadline for me and four o'clock for those of you back east. So, uh, But it had a great trip, and I want to welcome you all back here to uh, our show here on Pet Life Radio, the live show where you can call me right now at 877-385-8882 and uh, ask a question about your pet. You can also go on, online at Pet Life Radio and live, you can type in a question and I will read it and answer you live as well. So that's a good deal. You know, there's been a lot going on. I'm sure you've heard about this chicken jerky and the problem with these treats it's been, you know, all over the news of late, nearly 600 pets deaths associated with the Chinese chicken treats. These are chicken treats coming out of China. And, um, you know, really, the FDA doesn't know exactly what the problem is, but they feel approximately 3,000 reports of pet illness related to the consumption of these jerky treats. And as I said, almost 600 deaths. They all are treats reported that are imported from China. And um, I mean, this started back in 2007, but we're seeing more and more and nobody really knows exactly 
what's going on. It's about probably most of the problems associated with gastrointestinal illness, many with elevated liver enzymes. About 30% are kidney and urinary signs as well. So um, and then about the remaining 10%, oh, it could be tremors, convulsions, hives, skin irritation. I mean, almost anything. There's a, there's a particular kidney condition that we see called Fanconi syndrome, and that too is a uh, kidney failure. So we see that as well. And a lot of the nutrients that are usually lost in the urine are instead being reabsorbed, causing the problem. So I want to continue to talk about this more, but we have a caller coming in. So uh, caller, go ahead. You're uh, live here with Dr. Jeff. You're on Pet Life Radio. Hi, my name is Tracy and I'm calling from California. Hi, Tracy. And hi, I have four dogs, but one of them is an elderly 12-year-old Beagle Rottweiler mix. Oh, that's and an interesting mix. Per- I know. I, everyone always was, asks me who was who. <laughs> some, somebody was very acrobatic, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what I was wondering, he's, he's starting to lose his hearing, and it seems like in the morning I keep on sneaking up on him, and it scares him. And I was wondering if you have any tips on how to, how to work with a dog that's going deaf to keep him from getting scared and freaking out. Well, whenever absolutely. Whenever kind of happen upon him. You know, first of all, it's not uncommon. We see this a lot as dogs get older, especially, you know, 12 for Beagle is not super old, but 12 for a Rottweiler is very old. So, so you know, it could be the deafness is it's a neurologic deficit. Of course, you want to check the ears out to make sure there's nothing simple that's being missed, like some, you know, waxy plugs or things like that. But typically, mm-hmm. older dogs that come in, we have, of course, checked that out. And it turns out to be simply nothing more than old age deafness. And now's the time to start using a lot of hand signals as you're talking, as you're relating, you know, to the dog. Is it a male or a female? It's a male. A male. So, uh, you know, as you're relating to him, as you're talking to him, start giving him a lot of hand signals. That helps along. And then when, as far as not freaking up on him is start every time you approach and you see he's in that deep, deep sleep. You want to just come and start gently at first. You don't want to like come up onto him and just you know kind of grab him, but gently just start mm-hmm. caressing the top of his head or the side of his face or under the ears, just so he knows you're coming. And then it also helps sort of make that eye contact with you, looking for what the next command is. Whether it's you know you know it's interesting when we teach dogs in general, we always recommend the sit stay heel. You know you sit, you hold your hand up and face it to you. You stay as you you put your palm at you know sort of directly at him. And uh, so now even more so, you don't even need the voice command because they're so used to the hand commands that we've tried even when their hearing was fine to teach them. So I think, mm-hmm. you know, that's always, it's a good idea to get, even those of you listening, when you have young, healthy dogs, it would really be a good idea to do a lot of your basic commands to associate them with some sort of hand command as well. And then, you know, what it is amazing is they will, first of all, dogs are amazing at feeling vibration. So Mm -hmm. typically, if you wanted to walk as you're approaching a bit more loudly, not so much for the sound that you make, but for the vibration that they will pick up from the floor. Again, so he kind of knows you're coming. It's not coming at him and and trying to freak him out. Another thing you might want to try is maybe a dog whistle. There are frequencies that we can't hear, but dogs can. And even at the higher frequencies, I have a lot of people that will come to me with a, a dog that likewise dog doesn't hear me, doesn't hear me coming, doesn't you know hear the garage door or the key in the door, things that they would, oh my God, meet, greet them at the front door aren't working anymore. They can, you know, there could be noise in the house and the dog is you know, dead asleep, right? Doesn't respond. And they'll come into my room and I'll purposely have the pet owner, have the dog looking at them and distract the dog so it's not paying attention to me. And I'm a really good mm-hmm. whistler, and I will give this loud shriek whistle that, I mean, they hear down the block, and the dog totally <laughs> perks up and turns around. So, <laughs> so I notice that a lot of times it's either just there are certain frequencies that are not picking up anymore. Older dogs are sometimes like teenage kids, and we call that selective hearing. So when you're <laughs> yelling at your kid to do their homework, they're tuning you out because you're not important. But, you know... Say you, you want to go get, have dessert or you want to go, uh, go see the movie or go to the ball game. Oh, they hear that all of a sudden. So sometimes, you know, when uh, try preparing the food and seeing if uh, that does it, it may or may not. But anyway, it is most likely a normal age change, nothing to panic about. They do adapt. And just as you approach, knowing that he's having this problem, just do so a bit more gently. But uh, okay. that's great. And I want to thank you. Why don't you send me an email to Dr. Jeff, Dr. Jeff at drjeff.com, at drjeff.com. With your info, we'll send you out, since you have a, an old Beagle mix, either our senior vitamin or our senior glucosamine as a gift from ProSense Pet Products. All right? Oh, thank you so much. All right, Tracy. Okay, thank, thank you for so calling. Much. 
Thanks a okay, lot. Okay, bye-bye. Good luck, bye-bye. So anyway, for those of you, see how easy that was? It's very easy to pick up the phone. I don't bite. Some of my patients do, but not me. Anyway, let's go back to these you know, very serious problems with these jerky treats that we are hearing a lot about, causing liver problems, causing kidney problems, potentially causing convulsions and tremors. And the problem is we don't know exactly what the active ingredient causing this problem is. So a lot of the big brands, we had a decrease in January 2013, where a lot of these brands were removed off the shelves. But again, there seems to be a rise again. So until we know more about it, there are, I know there was a study being done at the University of Queensland, and it was sort of examining the renal tubules of a number of these dogs, over 100 dogs that were diagnosed with a problem that may be related to these chicken breast strips and the chicken jerky. And they were all made in China. And they were taken off the market, of course. But until we know more, my recommendation would be that if you're going to buy any of these, I would say in general, whether they're the rawhide strips, whether they're the jerky strips, anything that's coming out of China, until we know more, I think the smart thing to do would be not to buy it. If you want to buy something, look for things that were made right here in the good old USA. The controls are much stricter. And until we know more about it, we have to be really, really careful. If you suspect that your pet has been having a problem with these treats, please, you can get a hold of us here at the show. You can just uh, write to Dr. Jeff at PetLifeRadio.com and let us know what's going on. And I can sort of direct you into the right place or at least talk to your veterinarian. But we have to be really, really careful. You can go on. FDA has a a link about uh, the pet chicken jerky treats. You can go on do a a Google search, uh, FDA and chicken jerky treats from China, and you can get a lot of information from that as well. So I certainly hope that none of you listening have had pets with this problem. I hope that you don't even know anybody who has. But with the number of cases that have been recorded, over 3,000, and a large number of deaths, that is a really, really a big concern to all all of us who take care of pets. We're getting late in the show. We have another caller on. So uh, caller, go ahead. You're on live with Dr. Jeff. What's up? Hey, this is Megan Blake from Pet Life Radio's A Super Smiley Adventure. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm great. And we love your show, Smiley and Angel, over here giving you eight paws up today. Well, good. I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. So have you heard or known anybody who's having these problems with the chicken treats? Absolutely. Yeah. It's been all over the national news. And right. it is a uh, great concern, and every pet owner needs to know this. Yeah, they're very chicken, good advice. And I would say anything, as I just made the uh, the comment, that I think anything that is not made here, until we know a lot more, just should be avoided. Yes, these things are much less expensive, and you can buy those huge bags for probably half the price, but it's just not worth the risk. It's not worth the risk. And the FDA has even haven't been able to identify exactly the problem, which makes it even more frightening. I know that's what's so scary about it. You're right. I guess all we can do is look for made in the USA because sometimes things that are made here, though, can still be deceiving that the products are imported from China. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yeah. So, I, yeah. and again, these are most of all the problems that they've had are products from China and they don't know exactly what it, what it is, but there's liver problems, kidney problems, potential tremors, convulsions. It's, as I said, it's frightening and it's not worth it. Just not worth it. Right. Right. And actually I have a question for you. It's not about, thank goodness, it's not about these treats, but I have a German shepherd who's Angel, who's Smiley's friend, Angel, uh-huh. for his sister, and um, she actually the last two days has been throwing up after breakfast. And she's on a made-in-USA dog food that's one of the more expensive, you know, high-level brands. Right. And she doesn't seem cool at all. She plays. She gets her toys. She runs all around. But she's totally herself. So I've kind of ruled out bloat just from that because that's extremely Absolutely. Do you have any idea why all of a sudden for the last two days she could be throwing up after her food? Uh, how old is she? She's five. Okay. And is she the type of dog that might eat something that she's not supposed to? Like, no, you know, she actually follow is a not, toy, we, nothing like that. I know she's actually not treat driven at all. We can't even use treats to train her. She's basically just very attached to her people. So she's not food driven or treat driven. Matter of fact, a normal procedure for her is we feed our dogs twice a day. And sometimes uh-huh. she'll just get breakfast and she's done that for years. She's just not food driven at all. So okay. this time she has been eating, but then she throws up. What do you think? Uh, all right. She is still eating. If you offered her the food, she'll still want to eat. 
Yes, and she did okay. eat dinner and did up. It's just been yesterday morning and this morning. All right, I'll tell you what to do. First of all, it, it doesn't sound like this is panic situation at all. A lot of times, dogs will have some gastric reflux in the morning, and it could okay. be the fact that she, she held her dinner down, but she doesn't hold her morning, her breakfast down. Yep, maybe. Yes, then, that's right. So what I would do is I would give her, she's a shepherd. She's what, about 60, 70 pounds, 80 pounds? She's more like, she's a big girl. She's like 90 Oh, wow. Okay. I would give her at a half a mig per kig. So she's, she's say, 40. You can give 20 milligrams of Pepsid AC. Oh, okay. Give it to her about a half hour before breakfast. And then uh-huh. to start, I would only give her like a half of her normal size meal. That makes perfect sense. I See like how she that. does. Let her eat and let her rest afterwards. If she keeps it down, she seems fine. She's acting fine. Maybe about an hour and a half, two hours later, give her the other half and see how she does. That sounds good. That sounds like a great idea because, like you said, it absolutely does not sound like a panic situation. If it did, maybe she would have been in the vet right yeah, away. Yeah, if she's I'm acting fine. now, if she continues to do this despite the Pepsi, the smaller meals, or if her behavior, her attitude changes and she starts seeming more depressed, then I would definitely take her in to have her checked out. Absolutely, because then they're telling you, I don't feel well, somebody help me, right? Exactly, and she could have something going on in her stomach. You know, we need to check that out. How long after she eats does she actually vomit? Is it minutes or is it like um, a half hour? How long after? It was pretty soon. Let me think. Yesterday, it's hard to remember. No, it was like a half an hour. It was not immediate. Okay. It was like okay. about a half hour. All right. And she went through heaving. It wasn't like open her mouth and yeah, it came out. You know, that, that dog, that she was dog the heaving. Noise. Okay. Yeah, that's vomiting. Okay. As opposed to regurgitation. All right. That's the plan then. A little Pepsid. Hey, good. Uh, have her go easy. Eat half a meal first. Make sure she say, it keeps it down. And then we'll go from there. Okay. Cool, Dr. Jeff. Listen, you have a wonderful show. And thank you for all your great advice for me and Angel and for everybody. We appreciate you Thank you, you so much. Lot, and, okay? and if you want to listen in next week and let us know how she's doing. And of course, you can always get a hold of me directly at Dr. Jeff, Dr. Jeff at drjeff.com if you have any more questions. Okay, Dr. Jeff, thank you. And just uh, shout out to Super Smiley. Everybody come listen to Super Smiley Adventure too. We appreciate that. Thank you so thank much. You. All right. Thanks a lot, Megan. Okay, bye. Okay, and with that, I want to thank Megan for the call. And we're going to follow up on Angel, make sure she's okay. And it is time for us to go. Boy, it goes fast. So uh, I want to thank you for joining me here on Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff here on Pet Life Radio. Um, and we will see you here next week. And again, if you have any questions during the week, you want to send me an email, go ahead and send it to drjeff at petliferadio.com. And uh, we'll uh, answer you next week live. Have a great week. See you next week. Thanks. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.